thank you um, for the invitation uh, to the um, organizing committee. So it's a pleasure to be here. So I'm going to talk about some recent work on um, Le Jean de Paz, um, which we will see uh, will be certain paths that will be related to the Le Jean de symbol. And it's an, uh, another way of viewing character sums, quadratic character sums. Okay, so throughout the talk, P will be a prime number. And this here is the usual notation, standard notation for the Le Jean de Paz modulo P, and Le Jean de symbol modulo P. Um, it is known that the uh, sequence of values of the Legendre symbol behave randomly in short intervals. And this is, for example, uh, illustrated in the following theorem of uh, Davenport from the 30s, uh, which says the following. So take your favorite sequence, epsilon n of plus or minus one, let p be a large prime and take k, so think of p as having like 100 digits, for example, and let k be something up to log p, then if you let P go to infinity and you look at the probability that consecutive uh, values of the Legendre symbol, so A mod P up to A plus K minus one mod P coincide with your sequence, the probability is exactly what you expect if everything was random and independent, which is one over two to the K here. So P over two to the K is the number. Um, and um, this in fact, um, or th this fact, this randomness was used by a cryptographer in 1988, who proposed to use the sequence of these consecutive Legendre symbols. So once you shift them, let's say by a secret key and the prime P is public, um, to construct a pseudo random number generator, which is cryptographically secure. And I mean that uh, it's difficult to recover the secret key or to, um, uh, to predict what's the next values of this Pseudo, number, uh, pseudo random number generator if you know just the prime P. And in fact, the best um, uh, recovery attacks algorithms have complexity, which is exponential, something like square root P. So it has applications also to cryptography. So here is another result also, which um, illustrates this randomness. This is a result of Davenport and Erdős um, who proved the following. So they show that um, as P uh, goes to infinity, if you take H to be a parameter such that log H is little of log P and H goes to infinity as um, P goes to infinity. So think of H as being like less than P to the little O1. And you look at this sum, this short sum of uh, the Legendre symbol. Uh, so the sum from N to N plus H, you take a n to be uniformly randomly among the integers zero to p minus one with the uniform distribution, then the distribution of this short character sum here converges in law to a Gaussian of mean zero and variance h as p goes to infinity. What this means exactly is that if you take this sum here and you normalize by the square root of the variance, so square root of h, and you want it to be in an interval alpha beta, uh, so you look at the number of occurrences of this event. So the number of n uh, in zero p minus one of this event, and you divide by the uniform probability, then this converges to the Gaussian. And what's interesting here is that if p is, if h is super large, then uh, this uh, converges to the Gaussian is no longer valid. And this is a beautiful recent result of Harper. Uh, so in the range h bigger than p over log p to the a, this is no longer valid. So here there is a, and we don't know what happens in between. So here is h less than p to the epsilon, and here h is greater than, let's say, p to the one minus epsilon. And between, we don't know what happens. So, um, so now I will give you a different perspective of, lo uh, of looking at these questions, and we're going to concentrate on longer character sums where uh, much less is known. So here uh, for t um, positive number, let's as p of t, and this is a notation that we, we're gonna take throughout the talk. This will be the sum up to t of the Legendre symbol modulo p. Okay. So a central problem in analytic number theory is to understand the size and the distribution of this character sum 
uh, either as P varies or as T varies or as both vary. And, and particularly, for example, if you, 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 we can have strong bounds for this when T is very small, then we have uh, information about the least quadratic non-residue modulo P. So here are simple facts about SP of T. SP of T is a periodic function of T of period P. This is trivial. On the other hand, it's not continuous. So it has jump discontinuities at the positive integers uh, within a period at the integers one to P minus one. And it fluctuates a lot. So we will see later that the maximum of SP of T is always bigger than a constant squared P. And it's also less than a constant squared P for almost all prime P. So here I will make this what I mean precise, because what I mean is that it's less than a constant that depends on epsilon for all primes except a set of density epsilon within the primes. So it fluctuates a lot and it's not continuous. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna replace the study of, of the character sum SP of T, the object in which we are interested, uh, by what we call the genre paths, which are uh, better analytically. So we're gonna smooth, or we're gonna normalize the, the character sum by squared P, and we're gonna make it into a continuous function. That's what we're gonna do. And the object we will end up with, uh, we will call it the genre path, okay? So what is the definition? Here is the precise definition. So the genre path attached to the prime P is a polygonal path whose vertices are just the values of this character sum. So SP at G or G between zero and P minus one, we normalize by square root of P to have something roughly bounded. And uh, we glue these points together to have something continuous, glue them linearly. So that's why we end up with a polygon at that. I will show you some pictures um, soon. So that's the Legendre path. Okay, so here are some simple properties of these paths. Um, first, it starts at zero, zero, and it ends at P minus one, zero. So it starts at zero, zero, that's trivial. Uh, and then at P minus one, zero, uh, follows simply from the fact that the, the total sum, the complete sum of characters uh, is zero, because we have exactly P minus one quadratic residues and P minus one quadratic non-residues among uh, uh, the classes modulo P. And so we have cancellation. And we also have a symmetry in the, in the path, which comes just from the value of the Legendre simple at minus one. And so we have a distinction between these two classes. And we will see that there is quite a distinction between these two classes when we look at the character sum uh, of the Legendre symbol in, uh, for other paths too. But more precisely in this case, if you uh, take the, the image at P minus one minus J, and you compare it to the image of J, we have a complete symmetry in the first case and a minus it PJ in the second case. So in the first case, if you extend it with periodicity, you end up with an even function. So we will say that the Legendre path attached to a prime P is even if the prime is congruent to three modulo four. And um, in the second case, if you extend it, you get an odd function. And so we will see that the illusion of the path will be odd if it's congruent to one mod four. Okay. So here are some nice pictures of the genre path. So we start with the first one, which is the Legion path um, attached to the prime 991, which is a prime congruent to three modulo four. And here you see that if you extend this with periodicity, then you get an even function. So here um, the path is. Uh, symmetric with respect to the line x equals p minus one over two. And here is another uh, Legendre de path, this time uh, an old Legendre de path, but with a prime of similar size. So uh, prime 997, which is congruent to one modulo four. And again, you see here a symmetry with respect to the point p minus one over two zero. Yeah. And if you extend it, then you get an old function. So we'll ask um, interesting questions about these paths, just like you have pictures and you wanna understand them. And it turns out that some of these questions are uh, correspond to longstanding problems about the genre symbol and character sums in, in general. So the first question is, well, you have a path that starts from zero and ends at zero, and you wanna understand when does it decrease for the first time? 
And so the, the path um, is formed with sums of the Legendre symbol. So the first time it has the value zero, and then you add the Legendre, path, uh, Legendre symbol of one, so you add one. And so it decreases precisely when the Legendre symbol equals minus one. And so this corresponds to understanding the size of the least quadratic non-residue modulo P. So here is a second question. How large is the peaks of the path, the maximal distance from point on the path to the x-axis? So think of the path as being sort of a mountain, ups and down, and you can ask, well, how large is the, the distance here, okay? And so this corresponds exactly to understanding the maximum of character sums. And you can ask also, how is this quantity distributed as P varies? So this is a second, our second question. And as I said, this is equivalent to studying the maximum of character sums and in particular linked to the Polyabinogradov inequality. Okay, so the third question is as follows. You have um, a path, which you can think of as sort of an iceberg. Uh, visible uh, portion is above the x-axis and a non-visible below. And you can ask, well, what, is, what proportion is visible? What proportion of the path lies above the x-axis? Because it's ends, uh, it starts at zero and ends at zero. And in this case, this is equivalent to studying the positivity of these sums, positivity of character sums, or in, in our case, sums of the Legion du symbol. And this is a question that was considered by Montgomery in 1974. Okay. So here is a remark here that this question is only non trivial when the path is even. Because if the path is odd, you get an odd function. And so uh, the proportion is just 50% once P gets large. So we're going to study this question only for even paths. Um, here is another question. So you have a path, and you can ask, well, um, it goes, starts from 0 and adds a 0. It's a graph of a certain function. And you can say, what is the number of x-intercepts in the genre path? Or what is the number of zeros? And this is more or less equivalent to something interesting, which is the number of sign changes of quadratic character sum. So more or less equivalent because you can get the rare event that you know you touch the x-axis without crossing it. But we will uh, be interested about the number of crossings uh, or the number of sign changes of these character sums. And finally, the last interesting question is as follows. So you have these collections of paths. So these nice pictures for many primes, and you can say, well, is there like a law? Is there something that is behind uh, all these distributions? So if you take if you take a very large family of primes, for example, primes up to Q, or in the adic interval, as we will see, and let the parameter go to infinity, do you get a nice limiting distribution? And for example, if this is the case, then you can ask, well, how random is this distribution? So perhaps it's a Brownian motion. She's like uh, uh, um, a basic example of, of um, random walks. But in this case, we will see that um, we do indeed have a nice limiting distribution, but it's not Brownian motion. It's something different. Okay, so let's start with, so we have these five questions. Let's start with them. And the first question is, when does the Legendre path decrease for the first time? What is the size of the least quadratic non-residue? So let me tell you a little bit about this question what's known in the literature, this is one of the most classical problems in, in this theory. So NP um, will be the least quadratic non-residue modulo prime. So this is smallest n such that the Legendre symbol is minus one. What is we know about this? Um, we have, so the first result is due to Vin from 1918, that you have um, P to the one over two square root E as a bound for N of P. And the best result that we have is due to Burgess, and it's more than six years old, and it proves the exponent of Vinogrado to one over four square root e plus epsilon. Okay, so there are some results that improve the p to the epsilon, but this is the best exponent up to date. And we don't know, we, we don't have any idea on how to break this um, exponent, but the conjecture is very far. The conjecture due to Vinogradov is that you should be able to replace this by zero. So uh, we should be able to prove that n of p is less than 
uh, a constant time speed to the epsilon for any epsilon. And it turns out that we can prove this conjecture conditionally. So assuming the drawn stream hypothesis, we have even a much stronger bound. So from P to the epsilon, we have we can uh, make it down to log P square. And this is a result of Enkini from 1951. So in particular, GRH implies in a broad of conjecture. And uh, this result is interesting because it has another application to um, a primality test, which is which was um, uh, which proved that primes in P uh, much before the AKS primality testing, but it was conditional. So that's the what's called the Milan Rabin primality test or the strong pseudo prime test. And assuming the GRH, one of the steps uses Ankeny's bound for n of p and gives that the uh, test is polynomial. So the running time is big of log p for one log p. So in this question, let me mention a modest contribution of mine joined with uh, Shannon Lee and uh, Sound Rajan from 2015. Assuming GRH, we, we made um, Ankeny's bound uh, explicit. In fact, there was back in Sorensen before us who, who had NP less than two uh, times log p squared, and we make it less than log p squared for all primes bigger than five. Okay, so that's the first question. The first time that the Legendre path decreases. Okay, so now let's see what do we know about the second question, which are which is the size of the peaks. So you have a Legendre path like this, and then you wanna know what is the size of the peak? How large can uh, the Legendre path go up or down? So you take the absolute value to, to, uh, to study the distance and, and so the quantity we want to study this distance is exactly this. So you maximize over all t's of the character sum up to t, and then you normalize by square root p because uh, you want to smooth things. You don't want big fluctuations, okay? And because the character sum, the complete character sum up to p is zero, uh, you can restrict your attention to the integers between zero and p minus one. So what do we know about this quantity? So we have the trivial bound that this guy is bounded by p. So you, if you divide by square p, you get square p. But in fact, we can do much better. And this is the classical Polyabinogradov inequality from 1980, that m of p is bounded by log p. So the unnormalized character sum is bounded by square p log p. On the other hand, we can show, uh, it's an easy argument, just using Parseval's theorem on and Combine it with a poly free expansion for character sums that I, I will show you later in the talk, allows you to prove the existence of an absolute constant, even an explicit one, I think pi over 12 should be, should be abysmal, such that for all uh, the primes, we have m of p is bigger than a constant. And so in summary, m of p is always between a constant and log p for all the primes p. And we want to understand what is how large can this guy be? And what is the distribution of this guy? That's what we want to understand. Okay. But first, we can ask the following question. Can we improve the Polyabinogradov inequality? And um, it turns out that this is a difficult question. So um, the result I'm going to show you, which is a, a recent result due to Manjarel, some version of it was approved by Bober and Goldmacher. Uh, but this result, what it tells us is that if you, you know, you have m of p is less than log p, so if you, you are able to change it to little of log p instead of less than a constant over primes congruent to three modulo four, then you can prove Vinogradov's conjecture for the least quadratic non-residue, the conjecture that I showed you before, and for which we don't have any clue on just making uh, the exponent of Burgess one over four square root e down to zero. So this tells you that improving Polyabinogradov is gonna be super tough. Of course, there are some instances where we can improve Polyabinogradov inequality, for, for example, for characters with an, a fixed odd order due to Grandin and Sandrojan, or for characters with um, a smooth conductor. So, but for the specific case of the Legion de symbol, uh, modulo for primes congruent to three mode four, it's extremely difficult. So then we can ask, well, maybe it's optimal. 
But it turns out that the answer to this question is no. So if you assume the generalized Riemann hypothesis, then you can go down from log p, which is the polar Vinogradov, to log log p. Okay, and this is a result of Montgomery and Bohm from 1977. So assume the GRH, then m of p is big O of log log p. And why also it's interesting? So it's interesting because we improved, they improved the polyavinograd of inequality, but it's also interesting because this um, uh, order here is optimal. And this is a much older result. It's due to Pali. So the construction of Pali works for the chronic symbol. So characters with um, attached to fundamental and quadratic characters attached to fundamental discriminants. And we need Linux theorem on bound in the least prime arithmetic progression for it to be extended to uh, primes or to, to the genre of symbols. And in this case, you can show that there exists a constant, uh, positive constant and an infinite sequence of primes such that m of p is bigger than a constant times log log p. And so assuming GRH, we answer the question that the maximal order of m of p is around log log p. But then we can ask, well, what is this constant here? or what's the best constant. So let delta be the limb soup of m of p divided by log log p, as p goes to infinity. And we can ask, well, what is the um, value of this limb soup? So Joshi in the 70s extended um, results of um, Bateman and Chowla for that characters to the case of prime discriminants to so this case and showed that delta is bigger than e to the gamma over phi where gamma is the order Mascheroni constant. And on the other hand, Granville and Sandrajan in 2007 refined the conditional results of Montgomery and Vaughan and showed that delta is bounded by twice this constant, twice e to the gamma over pi. And here, this is another instance where, you know, there is a discrepancy with a factor of two between the, the omega result in this case and the O result given by the GRH. Another uh, related problem is the, um, the bounds conditional on GRH for the, maxim, for the maximum of um, L functions on the critical line, where the, and again, there is a discrepancy of two between what we can prove for omega results, in this case in the exponent, and what the GRH gives you. And in these Problems, we believe that it's the omega result, which is closer to the truth, and it's the same in this case here. So that's a conjecture of Granville and Sound Russian from 2007 that the limb soup should be e to the gamma over pi. Okay, so conjecturally, we should be able to, um, uh, so conjecturally, m of p, a, the maximum of m of p is e to the gamma over pi plus little or one log log p, but we cannot prove it. And so in order to understand which of these two bounds is closer to the truth, one way to do this is to study the distribution of M of P. And that's what we're going to do. So, uh, so let me recall that M of P is between a constant and log P. That's what we have unconditionally for all primes. And um, Montgomery and Vaughan in 1979 were the first to study the distribution of this quantity M of P, and they show that M of P is bounded for 99.99% .99 of the primes, okay? Or if you wanna be more precise, if you, you put any epsilon, you specify an epsilon to be small, then there is a constant which depends on epsilon such that you have this um, inequality. M of P is bounded by this constant for all primes except a set of density epsilon within primes. And so, the event that we saw that M of P can grow up to log log P is very rare. It's a very rare event. Uh, most often M of P is bounded. Uh, but the Granville sound conjecture uh, tells us that M of P should grow as large as e to the gamma over pi log log P and that this is the maximum. And in fact, Granville sound made um, more precise conjectures depending on the congruence of the prime modulo form. So they, uh, the conjecture is that you should get larger values if you are three mod four, larger by a, const, by a factor of square three. So you, you can get Joshi's constant, uh, constant e to the gamma over pi if you are three mod four, but only um, e to the gamma over square root 
3 pi if you are congruent to, to 1 mod 4, and these are the maximum constants. And the goal of this study is to understand this conjecture and, and prove some results uh, that will uh, at least support it. Okay, so we're going to study the distribution of very of large values of m of p. That's what we're going to do. So in order to um, have some nice results and not have this constant in the distribution um, uh, function, we're going to just normalize by it. So take m of p and divide by e to the gamma over pi, multiply by pi p over e to the gamma, and call this quantity little m of p. And we are interested about these two quantities. So we want the, the proportion of primes up to x, which is congruent to 1 mod 4, and such that this quantity is bigger than v. And we also want uh, to understand the proportion of primes up to x congruent to 3 mod 4 and such that little m of p is bigger than v. Okay, so I'm going to remind you of these definitions. Eunice, there, there's a yeah. question in the chat from Henrik Vonich. So yes. uh, I could read it. It's, yeah, yeah, please. Should you have said uh, the value of the L function at one rather than the critical line? Probably refers to the previous slide. No, no, on the critical line too, because, um, okay, let me go to the previous slide. Um, okay. Sorry. Yeah. So on the critical line on GRH for the Riemann zeta function, we know that on GRH uh, log of zeta half plus it is bounded by log t over log log t, while the best omega result we have is that the maximum of zeta half plus it in a dyadic interval, let's say, is bigger than exponential of square root log t. You know, so there is a discrepancy of two. So square root log t in the bottom, in the omega result, and log t in the top. So that's why I mean the two here. And I don't know if that. Uh... Yeah, okay, can I say something? Yes, yes, of course. Is there any uh, relation? If I remember correctly, Montgomery and Vaughan uh, had uh, this constant for e to gamma over pi. Yeah. I from uh, estimations for the L function at point one. Yes, yes, you're right. Uh, so, but, but, I um, mean, how it how is, you... it is uh, connected. Yes, you're right. So, what, so what happened is that, um, uh, sorry, need to go. I mean that that's how you cannot also improve easily Koya Vinogrado because it it, it yeah indeed it, the, the, so everything is related so m of p is yeah. in fact okay. so this yeah. guy is in fact bigger than l one chi okay yeah thanks yeah so so whenever you have an omega result then you have uh, an an omega result for m of p that's yeah. So, for example, this um, to my yeah. So this result of Joshi, you can recover it if you can show that there are infinitely many Legendre symbols such that L one at the Legendre symbol is bigger than e to the gamma of over pi. So he he proved it uh, differently, but um, uh, you you can do that. Yes, it's related. Yeah. Okay. So let me go back here. So, so we are interested about this, um, these quantities. So the proportion of primes such that little m of p, which is just bigger m of p normalized by this constant, so that you have clean result, let's say, bigger than v. And uh, we have a discrepancy between these two cases, 1 mod 4 and 3 mod 4. So the result I showed you before um, of Montgomery and Vaughan, that m of p is bounded for almost all primes, you can uh, you can extract the following bounds from their work. So so again, these are so I remind you of these. These are the proportion of primes you are studying, and they what they showed is that these proportions uh, decrease faster than any um, negative powers of p. Okay, so that's the result, but only for fixed v, and this is important. So the motivation for us is that we want to understand super large values of m of p. And so we want to find, that's the goal. We want to find an estimate for these two distribution functions uniformly for v up to what we expect the maximum is. 
which is the Granville sound conjecture. So for P up to X, log log P is roughly like log log X. So uh, the maximal region here is V up to one minus epsilon, let's say log log X. And similarly in the other case of one mode four, where you, you have the same, but you divide by square root three. Okay, so that was the motivation of our work. And we could in fact provide such estimates. So, um, so this is a recent result, which was on archive uh, uh, last fall, um, up to the, uh, the optimal range or almost up to epsilon. Okay, so this is optimal up to epsilon. We have a nice um, estimate, a precise estimate for these distribution functions. So for primes congruent to three mod four, it decreases double exponentially, exponential minus exponential of V plus some error term. And for primes that are congruent to one mod four, you can see this square root three factor conjectured by uh, Granville and Sound Rajan in this estimate. So, um, so here are two uh, conclusions. So first of all, uh, because this distribution here, this tail decreases much faster than this one, we can draw the conclusion that uh, almost all primes that have super large redonder symbol sums must be congruent to three modulo four. So the three mod four, let's say, wins in this case. And also because we get um, the exact constant, so one here and square root three here, this gives a strong support to the Granville sound origin conjecture that the maximum should be exactly this. So M of P, uh, the maximum should be, uh, uh, so capital M of P should be E to the gamma over pi log log P if you are congruent to three mod four and you need to divide by square root three in, if you are congruent to one mod four. And in fact, if our results were to hold in a slightly bigger range, change this minus epsilon to plus epsilon, then the conjecture of Granville and sound origin uh, uh, were to follow. So this is the second question. Um, okay, so maybe let me uh, tell you some remarks here on this result. Uh, Bober, Goldmacher, Granville, and Kukulopoulos uh, proved a similar result, an earlier one, for another family, uh, which is the family of non principal directly characters modulo large prime Q. But here, let me stress out that the proof is very different from ours because their proof um, uh, relies heavily on the orthogonality relations of characters. So you have a certain sum of characters uh, which for which you need to uh, bound super large moments. And I mean moments up to log Q, where Q is the, is the prime here. And the orthogonality relations of characters tells you that only the diagonal terms contribute. Uh, but if you have other families of characters, for example, ours, then this proof does not generalize. So we discovered a different approach, which is more flexible and allow us to handle other families, in particular, the family of quadratic characters associated to fundamental discriminants or the family with prime discriminants, so the family of Legendre symbols, the result that I showed you. Though in this case, there is a slight difficulty coming from possible Siegel zeros that we need to address. And that's why our result is not as precise. So for example, here we have this uh, error term here. And uh, the method relies principally on the quadratic large step. So we combine several inequalities, in particular, Heath Brown um, seminal uh, paper from 95 on the quadratic large sieve and um, an inequality of Montgomery and Vaughan just specific to prime discriminants from their paper on uh, 79. And we are actually working on generalizing the method for uh, this distribution of cubic character as well. And uh, uh, so this will be treated in a future project. So the, the, the sieve also um, uh, is working nicely in this case. Okay, so let's talk about the last uh, three questions. Uh, uh, a bit faster than before. So, so the first one is, uh, or, or the third one, remember you have Le Jean de Path, think of it as being like an iceberg with a visible part above the x-axis and a non-visible part be, below the x-axis, and you want to know what is the proportion of the visible part, okay? So we're going to uh, focus only on even visual path, which corresponds to the case 3 mod 4. We call SP of T, that's the character sum of T. We can ask a nice question, which is how frequently is SP of T positive? This is a question that Montgomery asked in 74. And so we're going to uh, measure 
the points T for which this is true, okay? So let's normalize by P here. Uh, so instead, we're gonna look at T's in zero one, and we would like to understand this quantity lambda P, which is the Lebesgue measure um, uh, of points in zero one, such that once you normalize by P, the parameter T here, you have positive, okay? So SP of TP is positive. What did Montgomery, so that's the proportion of the path above, strictly above the x-axis, okay? So Montgomery showed that no matter what prime you take, you always have 2% visible. So lambda p is at least one over 50 for all primes, uniform, which is a very nice result. And then he showed that you can construct an infinite sequence of primes such that the proportion of visibility is less than a third plus epsilon. So two thirds, below the x-axis and one third above the x-axis. And he also noted, he didn't prove this, but he noted that one can use similar ideas to show that there are infinitely many primes such that almost everything is above the x-axis. So there is nothing below or maybe epsilon below. So lambda p is bigger than one minus epsilon. So in a master thesis um, in 2005, Mehkeri started study these questions, she slightly improved the constant one over 50 by you know, an epsilon. Most importantly, she ran extensive numerical computations, which suggests, suggests that the proportion one third in Montgomery's second result is best possible, that you cannot get less than, um, uh, then you cannot get more than two thirds negative. And okay, so the extreme case is one third positive and two thirds. Negative in the other extreme case is one, is everything positive. That's what Montgomery did. And she was also interested in to changing infinitely many here to a positive proportion of primes. So she proved this result, assuming the Gerard's Riemann hypothesis, uh, a positive, for a positive proportion of primes, the uh, proportion of positivity is less than 0 0.746. Montgomery has less than a third plus epsilon by just with uh, an infinite number of primes. And she showed that for a positive proportion of primes congruent to three mod four, lambda p is bigger than 0 0.285. Okay, and Montgomery had infinitely many, but one minus epsilon. So using my work on um, the distribution of, of large character sums that I showed you before, uh, so some ingredients in this work, uh, we were able to improve both results to in fact change the words infinitely many into positive proportions in Montgomery's result. So for any epsilon, um, there are there is a positive proportion of primes for which you have everything. Lambda p is bigger than one minus epsilon, almost everything above the x-axis. And another proportion of positive proportion of the primes for which you have the either extreme case or the conjectured extreme case, two thirds negative and one third positive. And we can also, quantify these proportions in terms of this guy epsilon. And you can also allow epsilon uh, to go to zero as p goes to infinity. For example, if you're interested into 100%, a real 100% uh, of positivity for, for example, you can take uh, epsilon to be a small negative power of log p and it's true in this result. So let me very quickly in one minute give you um, the uh, statement of the result. So change epsilon to one over T. So for T up to arbitrary large power of log X, the proportion of primes such that lambda P is bigger than one minus one over T is bigger than this quantity. And the other extreme case, you have log X to the one minus something small, delta is small. And you consider lambda P less than a third plus one over T and you can get this is that this is bigger than exponential minus t to the two plus delta. Okay, so in the last few minutes, I would like to talk quickly about the two remaining questions. So the first one is, remember how many times the character path crosses the x-axis, which is equivalent to sign changes of character sums, okay? And here I can't escape, I need to use fourth iterates of the logs, uh, which proves to you that this is a true analytic number theory talk. Uh, so we're going to use log k for the kth iteration of the logarithm. Uh, this is again the character sum we saw before. Uh, p of x is a set of primes up to x. 
And L plus will be the set of primes such that SP of T is always positive. So we can view this as a walk, a random walk, and you want it to be always above the x-axis, always, no crossing. So I think there are questions in the chat. No, no, it's fine. So, so there's, there's sorry? one question by David Meyer. Yeah. Is it true that there are infinite many prime number of primes such that lambda of p equals one? Not exactly. Ah, uh, equals exactly one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's I don't know. That's a very good question. Yeah, which is related to this. To this question here, because here it's like equals, but but like in a stronger sense that never happens. Um, yeah, the construction. Yeah, yeah, the the, cut, the construction doesn't uh, doesn't give you one. There is always one minus a cons, uh, something that depends on p. Yeah, but that's a that's an excellent question that I I would like to look at in the future. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so here is another related question. So lambda p is one, but in a very strong sense that no crossing, nothing crosses or touches the, or nothing crosses the x-axis. And let L plus be the set of these primes. What we can do is bound them, bound the number of these primes. So, so Bacon and Montgomery show that it happens with 0% of the time. So the number of primes is goes to zero, or proportion of primes goes to zero as, X goes to infinity. And this was um, improved recently by Kalmanian, who with the saving of log log X, or so log log X to the power alpha for some small alpha. And as a consequence of some of my work with Olixi Klurman and Mark Munch on Fikete polynomials, we can prove the following result. So, but the drawback here is that we have to assume that there are no single zero. So we have a similar result for the Kronecker symbol. Uh, which is unconditional, but for Legendre symbols of prime discriminants, it's uh, uh, much more difficult. And in this case, if you assume there are no single zeros, then you can improve this proportion to exponential of minus a constant log log x over triple log x. And we, in fact, can say a lot more, not just that the set where there are no crossing is bounded by this quantity, but we can say that for almost all primes, we have a lot of sign changes. And that's the next result. So assume that there are no single zeros, then there is an exceptional set of primes, very small. So pi of x with some saving, so exponential of minus triple log to some power a, a is a constant, such that if you're outside this set, so for almost all primes, then the character sum sp of t has many sign changes. So has at least double log, log log divided by quadruple log. So think of it as just double log. If you don't like, um, if you're not an analytic number theorist, just think of this as log log x sign changes. And not only that, but uh, also very early on. So in like less than p to the epsilon, you have many, many crossings of the x-axis for, for a typical prime. But the drawback is that you have to assume no sequel zeros. And again, if, um, uh, if you change this to fundamental discriminants, then, then the result is unconditional. All right, so we have, we have five minutes enough for the last question, which is the distribution of these paths, okay? So we have a collection of Legendre paths, uh, nice pictures, once P goes to infinity, do we have a nice limiting distribution, okay? So we equal that the path, this Legendre path is a, is a polygonal path with vertices j, z, p, j, where uh, z, p, j is just a normalized character sum or sum of the Legendre symbol up to j, okay, normalized by square p. And you have a path, so let's look at it from a different perspective. Let's look at it as a function. So let f, p be a continuous parameterization of this path. And because it's a continuous function, which is periodic of period one, we, has a Fourier, we have a Fourier series expansion for it. And this Fourier series expansion is just an easy consequence of the Polya Fourier expansion for character sum, because there is a very small difference between FP of T and SP of T. The difference is just big O of one over square P, so it's in this error term. But anyway, so you have this Fourier series expansion 
And let, let's not mind this factor here because it's going to be just a constant. So tau of p is the, the Gauss sum, which is square root p if p is congruent to 1 mod 4, and i square root p is if p congruent to 3 mod 4. So you, you, again, you see this discrepancy between the cases of primes congruent to 1 or 3 mod 4. Here it's the Legendre symbol, and here you have uh, um, the ex complex exponential, so exponential minus 2 pi i and t. And what we're going to do is that we're going to construct a random model for fp of t by modeling the Legendre symbol uh, using a Rademacher random uh, multiplicative function, uh, which, is, which, um, which is a model which has been studied extensively during the last uh, several years, maybe last decade. So we're going to model the Legendre symbol for m in z uh, in, uh, for negative integers by non-negative integers by random variables xn, where for positive integers, these are exactly rather macro random multiplicative functions, which are defined as follows. So xm is a completely multiplicative function in m with x1 equals one. And the xqs for q prime uh, are independent, identically distributed random variables taking the values plus or minus one with probability one half. So that's a good model for the Legendre symbol. And you extend it to negative integers by multiplying by a random variable x minus one, which just mimics the value of the Legendre symbol at minus one. So it should be also taking the values one and minus one with probability one half, because the primes are equal distributed mod four. And x m minus m will be completely multiplicative. So it's x minus one times a rather macro on the multiplicative function. And so this is our um, parameterization of the Legendre path. Remember, we had this. This is just the Gauss sum divided by square root p. So it's one if p is congruent to one mod four and i if p congruent to three mod four. And this is the Legendre symbol. So the random model will be as follows. So change the Legendre symbol to uh, the uh, rather macro random multiplicative function, and then change this AP to Y, which depends just on, on X minus one, which uh, this is just modeling the value at minus one, which is the same as modeling whether P is congruent to one mod four or three mod four. So in the first case, it's one here as in AP, and in the second case is I. So this is the good model for, uh, the Legendre paths, we can show that this is almost surely a continuous function or a previous series of continuous functions. And so it makes sense to look at this, once you vary t, as a stochastic process, a random process on the space of continuous functions. And what we prove here is that we prove convergence in law. So we prove that limiting distribution is exactly this random Fourier series. So that's the result joint with Aisha Hussein. Uh, as P varies among the primes in a dyadic interval, so we have to use a dyadic interval because there are some technical issues on the size of the prime. Um, and the size of the interval goes to infinity. This, the process coming from the genre de path converges to the process um, characterized by this random Fourier series uh, in the sense of convergence in law in the space of continuous functions on zero one. So what do I mean by this convergence? Well, I mean exactly what follows. Uh, so that's the precise statement for any bounded continuous function or continuous map from the space of continuous functions to the complex numbers. We have the following. So the sum of this map on this process FP um, so the average between capital Q and two capital Q, if you divide by the total number of primes in this interval, converge as Q goes to infinity to exactly what you expect, which is the expectation of phi of the random process. Okay. So this result was proved earlier by Hussein in her PhD thesis, assuming the generalized Riemann hypothesis, and then uh, jointly we uh, uh, were able to remove the generalized Riemann hypothesis from the proof, though it was a bit um, tedious because there was several parts. In particular, there was uh, also the annoying Siegel zeros here that we need to to show that they don't contribute to some uh, to certain moments of character sums. So let me end. Okay, my time is up, so I will end with uh, nice pictures. Okay, so let me remind you of this Legendre path. 
um, attached to this prime of size probably 1,991, which is concurrent to 3 mod 4. And here is a sample with 10,000 points of the random Fourier series uh, corresponding to this case. So with x minus 1 equals minus 1. So you can see that these two you know, have similar behavior. And again, in the other case, here is the odd Legendre path uh, corresponding to uh, the other prime, 997, which is one mod four in this case. And here is a sample of the random uh, Fourier series. And uh, this picture, I think, is, is closer to, to that one than in the case of three mod four. So here is the Legendre path. And again, here is a, the random model. And that's all I want to talk about. Thank you very much for your attention.